geophysical sounding tests here it is a non intuitive method of seeing into the ground means we are not entering inside the ground we are not seeing the soil we are just sending some waves uh, into the ground and those by seeing those waves uh, uh, the nature of the waves and the behavior of the waves inside the ground we are going to decide some properties that is called as geophysical sounding tests we are not bringing any soil to the laboratory and we are not studying that way now the geophysical measurements this geophysical measurements works under two principles one is a mechanical wave measurement and the second one is electromagnetic wave technique mechanical wave measurements means sound waves are there we will generate some sound waves and we will allow those sound waves to pass through the ground and if the sound waves moves very fast into the ground and we will decide we we, we can conclude in one way and if the uh, sound waves are moving very slower in into the ground and we will decide the other way that i will explain later like that we can send even my electromagnetic wave technique electromagnetic wave means your current you need we need to spread the current into the ground and the uh, that how much fast the current will be spread inside the ground based on that we are going to decide some features and some tests are there here cross hole tests down hole test and spectral analysis or surface wave tests seismic methods that is refle reflection and refraction and uh, suspension logging these all tests are there but for your syllabus seismic method is there that is the reflection and refraction by using electromagnetic waves we have a tests like ground penetration radar and electromagnetic conductivity surface resisti resistivity magnetometer surveys four tests are there but for your syllabus we have a surface resistivity test okay we'll go one by one before going to the concept that is the theoretical concept first we will watch this video and we will understand how geophysical method is done that is seismic refraction and reflection method how it is done in the field we will understand so that it becomes very easy to uh, understand the problem theoretically now look at here there is a one instrument which is kept here and along with that some cables are there here and one laptop is kept okay and there is a one continuous one cable is there and along with that cable he is putting the geophones see the geophones are kept now like that there are many geophones are kept here along the length along the length many geophones are kept geophones means receivers then after that you can see here then here one point he will consider it might be a middle one or otherwise at a one one end and there he will put one steel plate and with the help of hammer he will strike the ground he will create some waves those waves are called as shock waves okay or mechanical waves and those waves he will create here you can see with the help of hammer he will strike the ground the shock waves will be generated and they will like that here there is a uh, one laptop means here the uh, everything is programmed here and the all the data from the geophone will be recorded in the software and how exactly the depth of the strata and where exactly the strata is changing its properties that will be studied by analyzing the data okay how exactly that i will show you in the theoretical and we'll solve one problem also so that you can understand it very easily in that video if i summarize just you have seen one person with some hammer and he was striking the ground with the, on the plate and there were many geophones kept in one line okay and the distance between the geophones we need to maintain maintain the equal distance if it is at the distance d then the interval between the each geophones must be g d okay and you should also know that what is the distance between the each geophones with respect to the striking point this is striking point we will call it as a source i think this much only we have seen in the video right but what exactly it is happening inside you don't know that we need to understand before understanding just i would like to recall the definition or otherwise the meaning of the word reflection and refraction this you, you might be studied in your basic science that is your uh, puc or first year engineering reflection means if you consider this is a mirror this is a mirror and here one wave will come and it will hit to the mirror 
and mirror will reflect the wave okay means it is not traveling through the mirror glass but it is just reflected understood this is called as a reflection and refraction means if the wave is coming like this and that will be traveling to the other media now in this method this method is called as what seismic reflection and refraction method seismic reflection and refraction method okay from this method what what we are going to find is we are going to find the depth of the strata at what depth the strata is changing its property that we are going to find okay let us consider a ground surface this is a ground surface and this is your source source means what where you are creating the shock waves they here you will put one plate and by using the hammer you are going to strike this plate not only the hammer you can use even explosives here in geotechnical engineering if you are uh, if you are you are examining the strata up to 20 30 meter then striking the ground is enough by hammer and if you want to go very deeper that is about 1 km 2 km then this striking the ground by hammer will not work therefore you need to consider the explosives to create the shock waves now let us consider one person he is striking this one and here with a regular interval that is a equal interval you are kept you kept that geophones they are called as geo phones you can call them as receivers receivers okay then inside what is happening is it will create many waves like this and out of these waves few waves will travel few waves will travel along the surface along the surface and they will be recorded in the geophones there are many geophones are there and these waves which are traveling along the surface and they will be recorded and these type of waves are called as direct waves direct waves now few waves will be traveling inside traveling inside if is there any another strata which is a a stiff one or otherwise hard strata then if it is a loose strata then this wave which is coming here that will come and strike here and it will reflect to the geophones it is reflecting therefore these are called as reflect waves reflection waves we got a second type of wave that is a reflection reflection waves and few other waves which may travel like this and uh, after getting the another strata they will refract and they will travel inside these waves are called as refraction waves we got a third type of wave that is a refraction waves okay now we need to understand here one concept that is if i have one layer here and this is a soil 1 and this is a soil 2 soil 1 and soil 2. this is a loose compared to this one this is a hard if the wave is coming like this and it will come like this there will be many waves not one waves the wave will be coming like this and each waves have their own incident angles this is incident angle this is incident angle this is incident angle this is incident this is incident like that many incident angle will be there. at a particular incident angle at a particular incident angle okay because of this incident angle the wave may wave may go like this because of this it may go like this because of this it may go like this like that i will get a particular incident angle let us call that as a critical angle at that point the wave may travel along the horizontal direction then when it travels along horizontal direction because of the another strata here and this is also another strata it may reflect again back to the first strat back into the first strat okay this is going to happen in the inside the ground you can see here let us consider one critical angle this is a critical angle and that wave is traveling here and it will travel back again to the geophones 
okay like that many will be there like not only one there will be many waves which will be traveling back to the geophones okay and what happens to this wave which is a uh, traveling inside the second half strata uh, it may find another strata and it may be incidenting into this strata with a critical angle and it may again travel horizontally and it may travel again back to the geophones again back to the geophones right like that the waves are coming into the going into the strata they may reflect they may refract and considering all these aspects there will be a derivation and in that derivation we are going to have an equation that derivation is not there for you that equation is got as h1 is equal to dc divided by 2 square root of v2 minus v1 divided by v2 plus v1 if you want the second strata that is your dc2 divided by 2 into square root of v2 minus v3 minus v2 divided by v3 plus v2 like that you can have the height then what is this h1 h1 is depth of the first strata and h2 is the depth of the second strata like that you can get uh, where exactly the soil is changing its properties understood okay. we will solve one problem so that you can understand it very clearly the data we will get it in this way we will get one table that is the distance from geophones distance from geophone to the source okay this distance we will be knowing that is your uh, uh, the, if it is the source and this is the first geophone this is your l1 second geophone l2 third geophone l3 like that okay let us consider that is your distance will be measured in meter and we will be having many distances then after that we will observing the time here the first geophone will tell that what is the time of receiving the wave that we will get the time usually the this time will be in milliseconds and those corresponding time will be recorded in the geophones okay no? then after that we will draw one graph we will draw one graph in this graph we will consider this is the distance that whatever that is given here that we will be marking with some scale and those points and after that this is the time this time will be considered in the y-axis time in milliseconds okay we will get uh, points here and after that we need to join them with a straight line let us consider this might be a straight line and at a particular point we will get these two lines are intersected and that particular distance we will call it as a dc that is a critical depth okay no? then after this critical depth we will calculate the h1 okay. h1 equal to dc by 2 square root of v1 plus v1 minus v2 divided by v1 plus v2 then what is this v1 and v2 that you can see here distance by time is a oh, velocity then this is a distance and this is a time therefore it is a 1 by v1 the slope of this one is 1 by v1 and the slope of this one is 1 by v2 that i will show you in the problem let us consider this is the problem now we need to calculate the uh, first strata depth first strata depth we need to calculate okay now these are the readings given what you need to do in the examination is this will be given in the question paper and by using this one you need to draw a graph let us consider this is a graph drawn by using those data and no need to join this one with a smooth line we need to join them with a straight line okay we will join the straight line let us consider this goes like this and we have another straight line we can have like this okay then here we got a particular point this point i will take it okay it might be dc equal to uh, if this is at 30 and this will be 25 meter 25 meter. means one data i got dc equal to 25 meter then i need to get the slope of this one that slope means here this point i will consider or otherwise you can consider uh, 
this we, this point only will consider and this distance this one is a time and corresponding to that is your distance now you can see here what is this uh, first one second third third reading and fourth reading right i will go back to the this one and there is a third reading and uh, the fourth reading third reading and fourth reading here i will get a v1 equal to distance is 20 minus 10 20 minus 10 divided by and this time is 49 minus 26 this is in milliseconds therefore i will write it into 10 raised to minus 3 seconds okay this is in meter now i will get the answer 434.78 meter per second then like that v2 i need to calculate go to the diagram here i will consider this and this one okay this is which reading this is the third fourth fifth sixth reading and seventh eighth reading right then come back here 1 2 3 4 5 6th reading and 8th reading 6th reading is that 100 minus 60, 60 that is the distance and 83 minus 71 83 minus 71 then I will get the velocity this is in milliseconds therefore 10 raised to minus 3 answer is 3333.33 meter per second now i will calculate the distance that is h1 is equal to dc by 2 square root of v1 minus v2 divided by v1 plus v2 dc is 25 25 divided by 2 square root of 434.78 434.78 minus sorry v2 minus v1 it is therefore 3333.33 minus 434.78 divided by 3333.33 minus plus 434.78 okay then i will get the answer you are getting 10.96 meter that is the first strata is 10.96 meter from the ground surface how interesting right thank you this much is enough for this class and later we will go to the another methods now we are discussing about electrical resistivity method electrical resistivity method okay. for the detailed information of electrical resistivity method one of our uh, lecturer uh, professor Priyanka madam madam's video lecture is there if there a detailed explanation is there that link is shared in the description you can go through that one and here for exam purpose only I am discussing that how much it is required for the exam in the notes which is shared with you there you will find and even the notes PDF description uh, the link is also given in the description and there you can get how much uh, the data it is necessary for the exam point of view okay no? for detailed understanding you can go through the other video which is there in the link which is there in the description now in the electrical resistivity method we will be having one uh, programmed one software that one machine here it will be there and we will be having four rods they are called as electrodes steel rods this is the first rod second rod and the third rod fourth rod like that we have a four rods are there the middle two rods we will call them as a electrodes they are potential electrodes potential electrode means voltage will be there means they will be connected to the, this machine but they will be measuring the voltage and there will be voltage drop then the end one will be a current electrodes they are called as current electrodes okay. through this a small amount of current will be sent there will be closing the circuit will be closed inside the ground that is depending on the resistivity if there is a when the circuit is closed inside the ground 
then you can measure the resistivity if the uh, this soil is a wet soil means there is a water table here or water content here then the closing will be very fast so that you can get the resistivity of the soil is very low and if it is a dry soil then the closing will be slow means there will be a, a resist a resistance will be more here okay that you are going to get it and there is a, some equation there in that equation you can calculate the resistivity and from that you can get the idea then what is the application of this resistivity method is to determine the ground water location okay sometimes this method is used to locate the borehole point also but in geotechnical engineering we are using this method to locate a depth of water table from the ground surface okay thank you and in situ tests in situ tests we have in situ test means we go to the field and we conduct there is a standard, uh, standard penetration test cone penetration piezo cone penetration field vein shear test pressure meter dilatometer and uh, backer penetration test io bore hole shear test plate load test in the next chapter in bearing capacity we are going to explain that shear load uh, plate load test and standard penetration test and cone penetration test these three we will discuss in next part of this module okay coming to the borehole lock when you put a borehole inside and you will get a some data and those data you can put it in this chart here see this all governments or otherwise any consultancy they will use such graphs that is called as a borehole log this is a bore log and the project will be written client locations will be written type of borehole this is a manual it is made and borehole diameter is at 150 mm ground water level it is not observed date of commencement and date of completion this is called as a legend legend means these hatched areas indicates that the different soil strata and their changes here you can see from this end to this end only one type of soil is there and here different soil and different soil and here different soil here you can name that soil as a brownish sandy soil and yellowish sandy soil both are sandy soil therefore one hatch is given and weathered rock it is here and soft disintegrated rock is here and borehole terminated terminated and as they said that this is a manually made here it is manually made therefore the depth is not that uh, too much this is only 6 meter they have included here and here you can have number of columns here here they have made types of sample spt n values and description it is made like that you can increase increase number of columns here saying uh, c value phi value density spt liquid limit the plastic limit like that you can increase number of columns based on your requirement this is all this is all about borehole log then soil exploration report as you all know know that to make any report you should have some uh, standard features for example general or introduction uh, literature review and uh, gen uh, conclusion references these are minimum requirement for technical paper like that a soil exploration report should con consist of these all points in it okay that is the scope of investigation why you did this one general description of proposed structure okay and exploration has been conducted geological condition of the site drainage facilities at the site details of boring description of subsoil conditions okay subsoil below soil is there that descriptions you need to write and which are sample uh, techniques you use to collect that that one these all things you are going to include it the following graphical uh, graphic presentations also need to be attached to the soil exploration report site location plan uh, map and location of boring with respect to the proposed structure and boring logs laboratory test results and other special presentations these all things you need to include into the soil exploration report this is all about soil exploration